That's a beauty. Is a chaga poroid? This is probably the tree that spread the chaga to this tree. So make no mistake, chaga kills its host tree as it rips open this bark and it reveals this porous structure called a poroid. Another piece of chaga. Another dead birch tree. Death by chaga. Everyone thinks that harvesting chaga is like killing the tree. And it's like, no, the chaga is killing the tree. Yeah, the chaga is pretty, pretty ruthless. Yeah. If it isn't chaga in its poroidal reproductive stage. See all those pieces of chaga at the top of that tree and also the, the various sections where the bark is peeling off. There's a limb of that birch tree which has already sporulated. So that has already reproduced. Another example of death by chaga. <laughs> yep, death by chaga. Yep. I'd like to show you something about this dead birch tree. It was killed by chaga. There was a study out of Finland. This mycologist who estimated that between six and 30% of all birch trees are, are killed by chaga. If you're in a natural wooded area, this, this will apply. And if you open your eyes in the woods, you'll see it for yourself. Where the chaga was is where that tree split. This is chaga, and this is the poroid. This is the fruiting body of chaga. So chaga actually kills the birch tree, and it has this surface called a poroid, where the spores come out of. Betula alleganiensis that has split into two trunks. You can see it has been infected by chaga, and it killed that second trunk, and that is the poroid. Those are chaga spores up there. We got another chaga poroid. That's kind of what they look like. This is what chaga does. It penetrates the bark. That's what the genus Inodotus means, to penetrate. And then it takes over the entire heartwood of the tree. And at the end of its life, chaga is, is just a sclerotium, which is like a nutrient source, very densely packed nutrient source for the fungus. And at the end of its life, it actually rips open the bark of the tree somehow. And this is where the spores come out. So this is chaga's fruiting body. This is the mushroom, if you will. Parasite to birch trees. This here is what I was looking for. This is going to be a really big piece of chaga. I'm not going to harvest this guy today. He's really just starting to grow on his journey of uh, decomposing, actually eating and killing a parasite to this birch tree. This, this crack here, that's from the chaga, and when it's ready to produce spores, it actually is going to rip open the entire tree. We are looking at the piece of chaga, a piece of chaga harvested in the springtime. And we're not looking at the piece that typically you would see. We're looking at the part that connects to the tree. Because this right here, this is active chaga mycelium. We have some agar. Uh, we're gonna see if we can get some chaga mycelium to grow. 
and form plugs to inoculate living birch trees on our own. Test one of pulling that springtime chaga mycelium from there. There we have it. Eleven petri dishes started. Plenty of chaga mycelium left if we had wanted to make more. We're gonna see how this goes. I'm gonna refrigerate them and check on them daily and probably put some parafilm over the top. That's Mishima, Felinus igniarius. It's a powerful healing mushroom with anti-cancer properties. We don't currently sell this mushroom, but we're thinking about getting into it. What a beauty. He's really on there good. <laughs> we'll leave him be, let him grow. This was far too gorgeous to pass up. This is the hoof polypore. Homies fomentarius. It's on there pretty good. Chaga 